Hey everyone, welcome back to a pickups video here. If you watched my last video uh, that was focused predominantly on books and movies, you'll know that this room is very hot because it's not tied to the central AC unit. So I do have a fan running back there. I did a test video and I didn't hear it in the background, so apologies if you do. I've tried to minimize that. Uh, before I get started, I wanted to show two things my wife had got me for my birthday. I didn't show last time and I really enjoy these. The first is a Twilight Zone themed mug from my Tide favorite episode, uh, Will Will Martian Please Stand Up, Highway, Ca Highway Cafe Buses Welcome. If you've never seen an excellent episode, Tide with the Pilot, Where Is Everyone? And that also kind of goes into a, a subject that I made a video response to, which was to Corn Muffin X, uh, Joe. He made a response to someone else, although his took a different tone. And basically saying that he doesn't make many videos anymore. A lot of the people he watch videos with don't make him anymore. He doesn't get the same back and forth as he used to. He's got a bunch of great ideas. Um, and he would sit in the front in front of the camera and go over these topics. But YouTube's at this point where people expect a certain level of production value that uh, while he could do it, he would just rather spend his time doing other things, which I completely understand. And I made a video response to that, touching on the people I used to watch that no longer make videos anymore. Uh, however, I do keep in touch with quite a few of those through social media, etc. And then I realized I had no gameplay footage to put it over. Um, and then I realized I had no gameplay footage for any of this. I normally splice some in here around this area. That's because it, the retro stuff is in this room and I have not been back here since I did the last video because it's just too hot. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I can do something to get that video up. It's a very interesting topic, especially if you've been on YouTube as long as I have. You've seen tons of people come and go. Um, and in regards to what he was saying, I, I even told him in the comments, I like it when someone just does what I'm doing, talk. I get more people, uh, some people are more visual and they want gameplay footage. They want really nice transitions. I normally watch videos at work. I just let it play on a tablet or something and, and I have it going in my, uh, earbuds so a lot of that goes you know missing on me i will watch some like classic gaming quarterly who put a lot of effort into it but for the most part a lot of videos because everyone's using the same software and most of them are using the same you know free transitions uh end up looking the same so you see, i noticed that with a lot of older youtubers who have tried to do this as their main job they start pumping out video after video and not only do those videos look the same, but they start to look like everyone else's and sound like everyone else's. And it's like everyone's got that same gamer chair. I, I don't know how everyone gets to that one, but you, I think you'll, if you saw a picture, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's kind of like a race chair. I see those everywhere. I don't know if they get them for free or what. But yeah, that was a really good video. I'll link it below. Um, might not be linked immediately, but I'll get to it at some point. And hopefully I can find some footage or, or put something up. Uh, so I can have my response up. Another thing my wife got me, which I know there's some fans of the show out there, this Columbo 3D birthday card. Look at that. Uh, this is staying on the fridge. This is amazing. So, of course, thank you to my wife. And to kick this off, I want to say thank you to two people in particular. The first is Emperor Fox, who sent me this book. Super Mario, How Nintendo Conquered America. I was not expecting this, and uh, I'll be getting to it shortly. I'm on this one book about the uh, Macedonian phalanx that is taking me a very, very long time. Uh, it's dragging out longer than I thought. The guy's repeating himself, kind of being snarky about things, which makes me put it to the side. But I am making good progress, so I'll be getting this. And my wife was actually really interested in uh, reading it. Because while she doesn't play games a lot, she does like reading histories of uh, kind of pop culture items. Second, a huge, huge thank you to McFly, or you'll know him now as True McFly. Was not expecting this either. Got it in the P.O. box. I know his name from doing business with him whenever he owned McFly's 8-Bit Avenue. And I saw the envelope and thought, well, I wonder what this is. And it was Guardian War. Me and him have been talking about collecting for the 3DO and how a copy of this had just got away from me. And he said, he sent me a really nice note that said, I saw it, uh, couldn't pass it up, knew you've been wanting it. And he is right. Uh, I've actually gone hard on the 3DO 
this period, and I think I'm done with it. And this is one of the big, big ones I wanted. Uh, I bought the import version just so I could try it, and I had fun with it. And like I said, though, have not put a lot of time into a lot of these games. That's not just for uh, heat reasons. I'll get into those later. But in this room is where the 3DO is. Uh, and, yeah, it's predominantly heat reasons. Um, I want to get, I think it's called a Tink 2X or Retro Tink. This guy made an S-Video to HDMI converter with zero lag. But they keep selling out. He only makes about 25 to 50 at a time. I did pick up an OSSC. But that does not do S-Video, and my 3DO only does composite or S-Video. And the, rest of the uh, OSC also does not do composite. So I would be playing that in the living room if I had another solution. Hopefully that retro tint comes through. I'll have to see. I do have a video kind of processor thing, but it's mainly for VHS to TV because it introduces lag. So uh, hopefully it gets that in the future, or the temperature goes down, which it won't, because we're not even at the, ho at the hottest point of the year for this state. We've got about six more weeks before it peaks, and I already feel like I'm melting. Some little odds and ends, one of which is a is more of a, a deal than it should be, but this thing has uh, eluded me for years. That is the Kingsfield phone card you get with the long box version. This thing has been so hard to come by. Uh, I've been following it for a few years, and at one point a seller had it for $3, but I missed the auction. I was at work, and I just forgot to bid. So I saw it at the tail end of it. I emailed them, and I never heard back. And then someone put it up for $25 for years. Well, I wasn't going to pay that. And then this popped up for 4 bucks. I absolutely jumped on it. I got it with like a dollar shipping, and they even sent it in this nice little... Uh, plastic protector case so i think the color you know i've looked at photos online and the color does look like this is just how it looks which is kind of i don't know blurry it's not really crisp but i guess that wasn't really their uh priority with these things but yeah super happy to get this it's the only thing i'm missing now is the uh Gaius poster and then all my games will have all the little doodads are supposed to come with. But this ah, this damn thing took a while. Um, another odd and end is uh, this, which is a 3D printed holder. And it represents uh, a Rhea that I bought for my Sega Saturn, which is an SD card solution. And if you buy it, it just sits kind of uh, on these pegs in the Saturn, but it bounces when you take an SD card in and out. I was able to get some 128 gigabyte Kingston SD cards at work with it. Uh, the guy that makes those recommends up to 32 gigs, but this model works. The 128 will actually work fine. Um, and I bought these, so what you can have is you can set extra cards right here. And I took some photos of um, the guy that makes these had a gray one, but he didn't like how it turned out. So I took a photo, and he sent me a free one. So I can see what it looks like with my gray model. I'll put that up so you can see what it looks like because I used a blue tray for that one. Because I actually got a Phoebe and a Rhea. I think one remembers Crack Lotus. I missed that fella. I don't know what happened to him. It's been over a year since I've heard from him. But I had bought him a Saturn for Christmas and it came in broke. And the seller asked for video proof. And when I sent them the video proof, they said, okay, we're very sorry. Keep the Saturn. I uh, will send you another one, EMS. They did. I got it to them on time. But I've been sitting on that broken Saturn for ages. It was the CD drive. And now with this, I have it working. It's a, a gray Japanese model with 128 gigabyte card. So far, so good. Uh, the menu software is a little rough because someone else had to make it. It's not as good as the GDEMU uh, user-made menu, but it works. And yeah, I spent a ton of time getting my games together. Of course, I backed them all up in the wrong way because he uses a format that is supposed to make the most accurate disk image. But you have to do weird stuff like use a certain image, certain version of Disk Juggler that's not available anymore. Or you use Demon to Damon Tools Lite, however it's called. There's just so much to it. But fortunately, some kind souls have already pre-formatted them. So I have this whole hard drive of my own backups that are now worthless because they are in the bin Q format, which this does not take. But long story short, it's working. Uh, I don't want to have every game uh, that I own as a backup. So I'll have to get um, those older those older programs at some point so I can get on that. Uh, this is my PS uh, TV. 
And what I bought is a thing called uh, SD2 Vita, which allows you to use non-proprietary memory cards in your Vita. The white is a 3D printed adapter someone sells on Amazon. Uh, get the latest model. If you're going to get one, make sure to get the latest one. And the black slit is a micro SD card. So now I have pretty much unlimited space for my PSTV. Um, I never hacked my Vita. I hacked this instead. And I got adrenaline working on it. If I have a screenshot, if I can find it, I'll put it up. Where I can finally play Gradius Collection, uh, Final Fantasy uh, Tactics, something Lions. I forgot the subtitle of it. Uh, but it's got a no slowdown and widescreen fix that were, uh, users made that I patched with it. So all that working with this, I can use a DualShock in the comfort of my living room. I had never heard about this, and it's been out for a little bit. Off of a forum, this is something else I've been wanting for years. And uh, out of nowhere, this guy pops up with it, and he wanted hardly anything for it. I think like 20 bucks shipped, which is an adapter to use your Saturn controllers on your PlayStation. Now, this should be easy to find because the Saturn is a superior controller, but it is not. I don't know why. Uh, Totec out of Hong Kong makes adapters to use your PlayStation 1 controllers with the 3DO, which I use. They used to make Saturn adapters, but they stopped. I have no idea why. Uh, I, he had this in the box, and this thing has zero lag. I was just shocked. I put in uh, Dodon Pachi and was floored. There is absolutely no lag whatsoever when you use a Saturn controller with a PS1. So this was awesome. I've been wanting this for over 10 years. Like I saw Totec had it as out of stock and they were the only people who sold it. I've actually approached the modders to help make one for me because you do need to solder. You need it for the adapter. No one would do it or I wouldn't hear back from them. And this guy said at some point, uh, a French company, I think, put these out for like a, a couple years and then they stopped and he bought one from them. And uh, like they were selling them on eBay and he bought one. That's what this is. So 20 bucks. It was awesome to finally have that. Picked up two books since my last video. Got them on the cheap. Roman Arabia, which is supposed to be like the definitive work for that region. And a book on Zoroastrianism, which is pretty neat. And you get to see how faiths tie into each other. Like, they called uh, Mazda Ahura a shepherd to the poor, which you might have heard about someone else. So I'm going to break these up by system, I think, and kind of do those, hopefully chronologically. So I told you I've been going hard for the 3DO, and my first one was a hiccup, and that was Dragon Lore. You see how this box is beat to hell? Um, it was not supposed to be. The guy sent this just in an envelope, and look at this. The upside is the manual he sent was absolutely mint. And all the discs work. This is the fourth time I bought this game. I've had problems with the discs every other time. And the other long box I have of this is in about the exact same shape as this. I cannot get this game, the, the box of this in good condition. I think I'm just going to give up unless I find someone selling the box separately. But he gave me half off. And because all uh, three discs work and the manual looks like he never touched it, I said that's fine. But, uh, yeah, that's really a bummer. But for, I don't know if there was a printing problem or what, but two other copies I have of that have disc rot where there's holes in each disc, and they've all in the exact same spot. Some other 3DO goodies I bought, and most of these have been from forms, uh, the purchases you're going to see. Not a whole lot from eBay. Was uh, Road Rash, Samurai Showdown, Escape from Monster Manor, and this game runs so much better than uh, Killing Time. It's this is after playing Killing Time and Doom, I didn't think the 3DO could do first-person shooters, but this is this is really well done. And it's pretty fun. Uh, there is gameplay footage of that up I did in that rant about John Hancock's or there are too many YouTubers that bullshit from a while back. Dungeons and Dragons Slayer. I was shocked that this was still available. The guy had it for about thirty dollars. And I, I, I sent him a message saying, hey, is this actually still available? And he said, surprisingly, yeah, no one's wanted it. And boom, had to pick it up. Got a return fire. McFly had sent me a disc, uh, jewel case copy of this. So I'm also going to put that one in here. Yeah, it's really great to have this in the long box. And I got Death Keep. I actually bought Death Keep first, I want to say. And then I read reviews saying, oh, if you get a, 
uh, RPG get uh, Slayer. So I thought, oh, I, all right, I'll get Slayer. So now we've got both, which good. I wanted them anyway. Really good prices on these. Like I said, I, I hit it out the park on the form, and then my go-to seller had three or four of them, and he just wanted to get rid of them. So he said, okay, well, like Samurai Showdown has some bends. Like you'll see some bending and some slight wear on the corners. I'm not sure if the case might be protecting that. Um, and so he'd say, uh, 20 for that. It's like, yes, give me that. So really good run on those. Um, I'll do kind of oddities here. I got an upgrade from my cross swords. The copy I had was really, really sun damaged. Uh, this is a copy of uh, Exard, I think. It's a fan. It has a fan translation. It's uh, Masaya. It's a company I like to collect for. Uh, this was cheap. It had been, I think, for Hit Japan at like 14 bucks with shipping. Uh, okay, yeah. So now I'm moving to Nintendo stuff. Glory of Heraclea. Or, sorry, Heracles, which is Hercules. Uh, this is actually the third or fourth one in the series. The rest are on the Famicom and Super Famicom, which I might actually try. This is Derek H. recommended this as a, a game you should try out. And I went to Amazon, and they had it for $7. So I snatched it up, and it was from a third-party seller. Fulfilled through Amazon, so that was no tax. However, it came with the plastic wrap, uh, like 80% torn off. What are you going to do? That is, <laughs> I'm not going to complain about the price. It looked a lot of fun when he showed it. I'll go with the older stuff first. Forum purchase. These were also really cheap. Box copy of Adventure Island. Remember the first time I played this was at my mom's friend's house, and it blew me away. I've always wanted it since, but I never thought I'd get around to getting it. And Dr. Chaos. Now, this might not be a great game, but I have this really uh, distinct memory of seeing it in a video game magazine, maybe GamePro, being super interested in it and going to the local video store, and I couldn't pronounce the word chaos. I was a little kid at the time, so I said, do you have... Dr. Chaos <laughs> and the woman actually made fun of me this like little Cajun woman I was like what I can't I can't do an old woman Cajun accent but me all Shad what you talking about yeah <laughs> it's one of those things and I'm going I don't know like seven you know what is this chaos me all like, whatever whatever jackass means in, in Cajun French what is it like is, is it couillon like, couillon I was like just give me the damn game woman so yeah that one was, I think, like, one of these were 20, one was 25, which for boxed, complete, and and the guy sent uh, protective cases with them. So, uh, saved me some money on that. Said so I wasn't going to get any more fan translation Super Famicom games, but I bought this in a bundle with Cross Swords, and that is Last Blade 3. This is actually an Atlas game. Looks like a lot of fun, so I'll be getting to that eventually. For Switch, I bought a physical copy of Thimbleweed Park. It's an adventure game for PC that uh, Limited Run put out, but they did a pre-order, so you had like a month if you wanted to buy this. Uh, my friends played through it and really enjoyed it. I was looking forward to playing this a lot. I haven't got around to it, though, which is Owlboy. Um, I've kind of fallen off of platformers, but this one uh, people really enjoyed for PC. What I have been playing a lot is this one, Octopath Traveler. Oh, man, you know what? So many times throughout the years, I put an RPG on uh, in the summer, and I want to relive that. I get that feeling again of being a kid and staying home all day and just, just playing a game and loving it, right? An RPG and just getting just so into it, and that actually has happened. All these false starts and stops I've had, um, this is what has stuck. It's so much fun. I'm playing the crap out of it. I actually played at work because we're having a lot of downtime. I, I wait for three or four other divisions to send in paperwork. And I work out of a satellite office, which is someone's home office. And there's hardly anyone ever there. And when there is, they don't care what I'm doing because no one knows what a Switch is. It looks like a tablet. So they just think I'm holding a tablet. And, you know, everyone's got tablets at work now. So they're just like, ah. I've actually haven't heard more than two minutes of this game's music because I keep it on mute because they don't know what I'm doing. And, you know, having game music plays like a step too far. But I chose the Merchant. Um... God, if you haven't played this, it's so much fun. And what makes it so interesting is each character's got their own storyline that you can follow at different points. And you can do subclasses. You can go the okay, go to a town, talk to someone, 
And the characters also have different interactions. Like the merchant can try to can purchase items off a townsperson, while the um, dancer can allure them. The fighter can duel them, uh, and the apothecary can learn more information about them. And that might unlock something like a location to a hidden item or just something else. And what's neat is when you go back later, the townsfolk will say different things, or they might actually unlock a quest line for them. There's just so much to like about this, and yeah, this has really stuck with me, and um, I'm not far in it story-wise, but I put about 20 hours in, and just, I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, this is going to be a giveaway because, so I bought the Sega Saturn uh, CG collection, which I, I put up, and this was about $18. So I get it, and you know, it's the rest were like 50 bucks, and no one wanted to come down on the price, and I knew it wasn't worth uh, much more than 18 but 18 was a good price, so I got it. Well, then I noticed this is white, and I thought, well, that's weird how it's yellow everywhere but white. So I looked on Satakora, and sure enough, this is sun faded. It should be yellow. As it happens, though, as I was looking at that auction to relook at the pictures, eBay had a thing at the bottom suggested, do you want to buy this for $10 shipped? And it's a sealed one. And yeah, now you see it's supposed to be yellow. So I said, okay, well, I'll make a video of the open one, and I'll give it away, and I'll just keep the sealed one. And that's what I'm doing. Uh, you do, I believe, need the VCD card with it. I have it, so I didn't run into any problems, but that's what it is. If you've never seen one, it slides in the back near where the battery goes. Uh, a upgrade, Dark Wizard. The upgrade itself is actually the disc. I told the guy, he had three copies. I said, give me the worst manual in case you have. And actually, none of that's all that bad, to be honest. It's the disc I needed. Um, my disc I bought had a fracture the whole way through. I think the only problem is this might not have a... Re yeah, the registration card's torn out. So he gave me a really steep discount because I said, look, get rid of your junk. I'll take it off your hands. Worst case, worst manual, worst back insert. And that actually turned out to be okay. So if anyone needs a Dark Wizard manual without the registration card and the back insert, let me know. I just want the disc. Uh, another form purchase that was really cheap, like 15 bucks. I have the Beholder. This is one I had bought on eBay like last year, and there was actually roach shit all in the manual. And I took photos and I sent it to the guy like, what are you doing to me? I touched this. And he's oh, sorry, sorry, just send it back. I'll give you your money. So I got that. One Super Nintendo game for my favorite seller, which is Ultimate Mortal Kombat uh, 3. I played this on the uh, Super NT, and I thought, oh, wow. You know, I actually never rented it, because when this came out, I just played the Saturn version. And I have a soft spot for... Uh, you know, late 30, late 16 bit games that competed with 32 bit counterparts uh, gave me a pretty good deal on it because it has slight wear in the corner. He said, I know you like a mint, so I'll knock a few bucks off, and there's some wear here, but I think this is about 35. Mortal Kombat Trilogy for the PlayStation 1. This was, I think, 15, uh, which I was happy with because the border is absolutely jet black, no scuffing. I also have a distinct memory of this which is, uh, I remember being in a car with my dad going to the mall for something and just seeing this, and, and I had seen pictures on America Online, but they didn't call it Mortal Kombat Trilogy. It just said, like, new Mortal Kombat game in the works. And me and my friend were like, well, who are all these characters? Who's Rain? Who is, you know, this the, the purple guy? And the, the what, what's going on here? That's every character from every Mortal Kombat. That's amazing. And... I had enough money on me along with, I said, I think my birthday was coming up. You know, if you, can I have it, you know, with birthday money? And he said, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> Called him on a good day because sometimes it'd be like, no, you wait till your birthday. But this time I got it. I distinctly remember it being very buggy though. Uh, like Johnny Cage would do a move and after he did it, he would just start sliding across the screen in his standing position. But my dad... Nice enough to let me get it early. I eventually sold it to a friend in high school and I needed money and I'd been wanting it back since. So glad to get that. This was also an upgrade. So some some lucky viewer out there, or a friend, because I'll just probably be posting it on Facebook. I upgraded my copy of Dodon Patchy. They'll be getting my other one. Uh, this is an excellent shooter and this came up at a really, really good price. Uh, the manual is in better condition, came with a spine card. My disc was already in good shape, but the case was in better shape. 
and I thought, hey, I'm not going to see it at this price again. So I snatched it up, cobbled together a better copy. My other one is still really good shape. You'll be whoever gets it will be more than happy with it. But you know, if I can get the uh, plus, a plus version of something, I'm gonna go for it. Uh, limited run games purchase. This is Munch's Odyssey. I remember liking this for the original Xbox, especially when he's in a wheelchair and he's kind of wee 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 wheeling himself around. I remember cracking up at that. But uh, this was uh, some variant cover they had, so I picked it up. It was like twenty four five dollars. Some PS4 stuff, which really haven't played much of this. Um, my mother-in-law got really, really sick, and my sister, two sisters-in-law came down. One stayed with us. One had kids that they would bring over, and I really didn't want to play in the living room while that's going on. I just, and I, you know, I wasn't in the mindset. Is it like we've just been bummed lately? That's why I really like Octopath Traveler. That's really taken my mind off of it. But she got, she's still really sick. Um, in remission now, but it could happen again in like four to six months. It's touch and go. She had an operation, and she's like a staunch Cajun woman who are, they're real stoic. And after her surgery, I was in the hospital room, and she started yelling like a guttural from the depths of your chest yell that freaked me out. I was talking to my wife's stepfather, and you know, the, the pain medicine she was on would knock her out. And then she'd wake up at a, just a growling yell and actually yelped and jumped. And I felt like such a pussy. I was like, ah, <laughs> you know, it's, excuse my, my jumpy nerves. Like it was, was I the only one not expecting that? Or cause the, the other two just, you know, looked at her and looked at me and, I'm, and my legs just went woo as I was sitting. But yeah, she's, uh, she's out and about now, but it just really wasn't, the right time to play game, like, you know, I'm sitting here doing, shooting aliens or some dumb shit while they're trying to work out a plan to, like, pay for hotel room stays and medicine and stuff, and I'm like, hey, keep it down back there, but, uh, I, I just wasn't in the mindset, and, uh, so I didn't really, I haven't put any time with these, what I'm going to show you. Now that she's out and she's kind of recovering and she's going to start chemo soon, you know, it's starting to get back to normal. And I, our spirits are getting better. It's still kind of depressing because she's still really sick. It's getting better, and hopefully it continues to get better. But uh, one thing I was really happy to snag was a copy of Skullgirls. This was a pre-order I missed out on at Limited Run Games, and they had a few left over. So I grabbed that with Munch's Odyssey. I, I've wanted to replay The Last of Us for a while. I never owned the DLC. It turns out if you buy the DLC... It was only like 10 bucks more to get the PS4 copy of the game with the DLC. Because I have the PS3 version. So I thought, well, to hell with that. I'm just going to get this for, I think it was like 19 bucks on Amazon. Dark Souls Remastered. I did put some time into this. I got in this game, right before my mother-in-law got sick, I got in this gaming rut. Where I got stuck in Fire Emblem Conquest or, or whatever, the Birthright, one of those. And I'm playing with Permadeath on. I really should just turn it off because it's driving me nuts. And if you don't play a lot of other strategy RPGs, what you're not realizing is the AI in Fire Emblem is suicidal. They don't care who dies as long as they kill one of your characters. And it's so annoying because it really loves doing that thing where you bunch your characters in a certain way to finish off the enemy. And suddenly, whoop, 10 enemies appear behind you and they're all on Pegasus and they can cover half the screen. And now your, your best cleric just died. So I, I put, I finally beat this hard level, put that to the side, put in her tear ring saga, which was made by the Fire Emblem people for PS1. It's got a fan translation. And I got into the same problem with that. And there's this one level I played about seven times and I finally said, screw it. And just to bum rush it, I end up losing some of my best characters. It's got permadeath on just by default. I don't think you can turn it off. And I kept like plowing through and just getting harder and harder. And I was not having fun. I was initially loving it. I look on a game fact and holy crap. Yeah. I missed out on like over a dozen characters on battle maps. You can go to doors and visit the building and people will be like, Oh, there's nothing here. Here's an item. Well, it turns out if you go with certain characters or go with certain characters a certain number of times, you unlock new characters that will join you. So I've missed out on a ton of good characters. And then when I quit on chapter 15, I looked up on, I really went to game back to see how long the game was. There's 40 chapters. I'm not even halfway done with this thing. And it's, it's making me want to throw the controller. So then I see I've missed out on tons of powerful characters. I've lost powerful characters. 
And not only that, but the chapter I quit on, the, the walkthrough said this is one of the most annoying levels in the game. And I thought, I don't know if I'm ever going to complete this game. I'm tempted to restart it and go through the walkthrough and f so I can get all these good characters. Because, man, plowing through it is just not working. So I got in this funk. I tried Dark Souls Remastered. I played through Demon Souls. I skipped it and went to Dark Souls 2. And I, same thing happened with this, all the Souls games. I'm loving it, I'm loving it, and then I get in this one part I get stuck at, and this part is like a cemetery with these really obnoxious ghosts, and I play through it so much, I'm just, the sight of it, just, I can't even look at it anymore, and that's what happened with this. So I was thinking, okay, there must be a bonfire nearby, so I go look it up online, and there's like, oh no, there's no bonfire and for like another seven screens, and I was like, fuck this. <laughs> I stopped playing it. I'll get back to it eventually. I'm like that with every Souls game. I have love hate. It's like a, it dips too. There's no gradual. I'm loving it and then don't ever show it to me again. For my birthday, my wife got me Dark Souls 2. Uh, the DLC for this is actually pretty fun. I played it on the PS3 version, but I just wanted all of them for the PS4. So now that I have that. I did play a lot of Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, and I I took screenshots of some of the art and made it as phone backgrounds. So I'll put those on here so you can see because that's worked out really well. But uh, this is a lot of fun. It's a shame that these are the arcade versions instead of the home console versions, so you miss out a lot of extra characters. And I think Capcom, they were like, oh, no, this is for the arcade purists. But no, 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 the vast majority of people played these on home consoles. They were just being lazy. They could have put the PSP version of Part 3 on there and the Saturn upgraded version and the PS1 upgraded versions of Alpha 2 on there. They could have had so many options, but they took the cheap, lazy way out. No, it's for the purest. No, no it's not, lazy asses. Uh, I was semi-interested in this until I saw Digital Foundry did a super positive review on it, and I picked up Sonic Mania, which I, this, is a, this is a very nice physical copy. Um, the shiny cover has got a poster and an art book in here. Like, way to go, Sega. Proud of you. Uh, this was an upgrade, Radiata Stories. So I'll be putting my original in the giveaway one. Uh, got this one pretty cheap, too. This is a game that hasn't gone up in price, surprisingly. It's about the same as I paid for it a few years ago, except now, uh, you know, the manual has a registration card. The disc is in better shape. There's no scuffs on anything. Uh, these two are... Kind of from Bubble Un recommended, uh, well, not so much recommended, just talked about them recently, which is Magic Carpet, the jewel case variant. This came out in 95 for the PlayStation as a long box, and then shortly after in the jewel case. But I wish I could take you back to 94, and so you could experience the PC version of this. This thing, when I say blew me away, it was amazing. D there has been deformable terrain before, but mostly from a bird's eye view, like a Sim City or something where a volcano or what, you know, earthquake would break buildings. But if you can see this, that's a volcano coming up from the ground. That's one of the spells. And you, you get to fly in between these volcanoes. You can make fortresses appear. I've never seen such deformable terrain before. And, you know, when I loaded the demo up from PC Gamer Magazine, I thought, well, you just fly on a carpet. But no, it's like a shooter dash strategy game. It's a oh, the problem is when you play this version and I have it for the Saturn, it looks kind of wonky. The controls are a little difficult. I mean, you, they get better with practice on the console, but the, you know, it's just going to be a little off for you. The graphics aren't going to be amazing, and you've seen a lot of this kind of stuff before. Never to this level. A, a follow up to this on current consoles would be phenomenal. But in '94, there was nothing like this. I would just sit there and make volcano after volcano. Because as enemies would, enemies would have come at you, you'd, you'd cause a volcano to appear, and it would shoot stuff out that would hit them. And it was just like, I can't believe I'm making volcanoes appear. I'm making fortresses appear. So yeah, I really wanted to get the variant of this. Um, Bullfrog, God, that was, that was so impressive back then. And he had told me if I was going to go for a Rayman to go for the jewel case. And what was funny is the guy selling this went to eBay... He was on a forum and said, uh, I don't see a lot of them. It seems to be a variant. I don't know. What do you want? How's 20? Uh, he says, the one sold look like for 25. How's 20? And I was like, or 20 to 25. I said, yes, absolutely. Smooth black border. Uh, that's, that's what I look for. 
And uh, I've been playing the greatest hits version, but now I got the black label and very pleased with that. Uh, the blue tape is just to keep the case shut. I don't know. The case actually shuts fine, but it was a nice little touch he did so it didn't open in transit. Uh, upgraded copy of Saga Frontier. I shouldn't even say upgraded. I should say working because I bought this before and it looked like someone did wheelies on the disc. The disc would not be read at all. It's got the weirdest warping and scratches I've seen. So I finally got one and I got it in really good condition. The other one kind of had some bends in the manual, but finally a working disc. One I never had, which I was shocked. Star Ocean. Got this one from my favorite seller. Uh, complete. And I haven't got around to it yet, but am looking forward to it. Uh, this was another upgrade. Chrono Cross. I had the greatest hits, but it also came with a loose disc from Square Enix. And so I got kind of worried that I'd get too far along and the game would start to screw up. But this guy had this one for 10 bucks, Looked great. So I went for it. So I'll give away the greatest hits one. And lastly, this one was about $15. Is it Charaman? It's an anime. I, I, I've never seen the anime. But uh, this is really, really expensive on the Saturn. It's cheaper on the PlayStation. And he just had it at a really good price. Of course, this is also like a greatest hits. But it's a shooter where you play the character. So it's a... I don't know what they call those. It's like Castle Shin Shinigami where you're not an airplane, but you're a person. Whatever the, I don't know. There's got to be a term for that. But yeah, this was really cheap. And Gotcha Man, is that it? And uh, yeah, it was pretty fun so far. But this has gone on for long enough. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to everyone later.